On April 3rd, 2016, I was finally able to journey to the sacred hollow grounds of the legendary Point Pleasant, the place where history merges with mystery. My sister, her boyfriend, and I traveled to see the Mothman Museum. We spent about two hours in there looking through the small museum, reading tons of stuff. I basically recorded the entire building with my camera while I was there. There was basically three rows of newspaper clipping to read, props, and stuff from the Mothman Prophecies movie. There were two Mothman costumes serving as statues. There were long posters of information on them, on things like, Who is Mary Heyer? or Who is John Keel? There were books and magazines and cases, articles, letters, writings from witnesses, rough drafts from John Keel's Mothman Prophecies book, John Keel's jacket, and even a Mothman claw machine. There were three TVs displaying three different Mothman documentaries or TV spots. It was an information overload. They had two standees dressed as the men in black, and one dressed as Deputy Miller Halstead with a name tag and everything. They had a backroom theater hidden by curtains where they were playing the 2001 Search for the Mothman documentary. They also had a cool looking Mothman quilt in there. We exited back into the gift shop. I bought tons of books, clothing, posters, stickers, pins, patches, plush, statues, energy drink, and basically one of everything in the whole store. I asked if they had any signed copies of Jeff Wamsley's book, Behind the Red Eyes, because I'd seen it offered online. The people at the counter said they didn't have any signed copies, but that Jeff would be in there around five. So we walked around Point Pleasant for a while sightseeing. First, we went to the Mothman statue by Bob Roach. Walking up to that, seeing it for the first time after knowing about it for so long, was close to a religious experience, really. We got tons of pictures in front of it. We got one of all three of us when a guy offered to hold the camera, and then some individual ones. Then we checked out the view of the Ohio River, the Silver Bridge Memorial, and the art painted on the flood wall. We saw all of Bob Roach's other statues, including the one of Chief Cornstalk. We went to the National Park, saw Chief Cornstalk's monument, the Panther Petroglyph, and the Battle of Point Pleasant Memorial. As we walked back to the museum, I realized how quiet and beautifully isolated the place was. We were able to just walk in the middle of the street. There was no traffic or people. It was humble and quaint. Then we returned to get the book signed. I got both the Behind the Red Eyes book and the Truth Behind the Legend book signed. I got a free Mothman mug for making such a large gift shop purchase. I also took a picture with Jeff, which was awesome. My sister, her boyfriend, and I then stood around chatting with Jeff for a while before we left. I, of course, told him about how I work on the Mothman Wiki. I'm not sure he'd notice what I meant by that, or if he would even care to look it up. I didn't directly say, go to the mothman.wikia.com or anything. My sister told him how I kind of want to do a Mothman movie. And don't we all, really, after the real one came out and didn't live up to certain expectations. Pretty much everyone who likes the Mothman wants to do that, to make a film more authentic that sticks to the source material. Jeff mentioned how he still wants to do a third book, but doesn't want to rush it out and needs to make sure it's quality. He said he tried to get the Mallets and Roger Scarberry to be interviewed, but they won't. I also remember him saying he teaches graphic design and art at a school center in Point Pleasant. I asked if he was related to Mothman witness Marcella Bennett. I'd heard her maiden name was Wamsley. He said he gets asked that question a lot, and that he's not related to her or the two other Wamsleys that died on the Silver Bridge collapse. We left and decided where to eat at. We ended up at a diner, which happened to be the same diner that the Scarberry and Mallets stopped at to figure out if they should report their sightings to the police. We ate some pizza there, and as we went to leave, they told us the last couple had already paid for our food. Very strange. Call it Point Pleasant Hospitality, I guess. My sister had went back into the museum and asked for directions for the TNT area because he wanted to see it. They gave her a map. We drove around the TNT area, or the McClintic Wildlife Area as it's technically called. We saw some dead deer and tried to figure out the map. Finally, we saw the road blocked off by a graffitied guardrail which led to the igloo-shaped bunkers. The graffiti on the guardrail said things like, Mothman lives here, you won't come back, and Mothman is real. There was a wooden sign with orange spray paint reading, Run Away. It didn't say run away, no, it said run away, any old way will do, even towards the bunkers. So we went over the rail and walked down the path, past the pond and found the bunkers. We saw three of them, we went inside them and took pictures. The entire area was creepy and awesome. We thought we heard something in the brush, like twice, but that's probably because we expected to. I did see a crane in the water of the pond, but it wasn't a sandhill crane, just a white crane. I even saw it fly away. Those things look nothing like Mothman in shape or movement, just saying. We left and drove around, looking for where the power plant was. We found it and looked at it from the fence. The old rusted tank was still there, and you could see the foundation of where the building was. Then we took the famous drive from that place back into Point Pleasant. We couldn't go 100 miles per hour though, the speed limit is like 40. Then we crossed the Silver Memorial Bridge, found a sign about the bridge collapse, took pictures of it, and went home. It was overall an awesome trip.